Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Yesterday, Manchester United CEO Richard Arnold spoke with fans at his local pub in order to stop protesting against the Glazer family outside of Richard Arnold's home. Richard Arnold has said that last season was a nightmare. He also spoke about Man United's pursuit of Frankie de Jong. And he said that there's money there to spend this summer so I've got to give Richard Arnold credit you know for coming out and doing this uh, Richard Arnold replaced Ed Woodward back in February you know Woodward left Manchester United after like 16 and a half 17 years Like I said, the Glazers, they've been one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. For a while now, you know, United fans have been protesting against the Glazers. And I said, you know, the protesting would persist until the Glazers are out of the club. You know, the Glazers have owned Manchester United for around 17 years. They bought the club for around 500 million back in 2005. Now, obviously, you know the news regarding Frankie de Jong. Manchester United and Barcelona are 17 million apart in their valuations for Frankie de Jong. Don't forget Man United failed with a 60 million euro bid and there was also 10 million euros in add-ons. I think Man United are looking to increase the offer to around 70 million euros. Man United are confident that Barcelona will lower their 73 million asking price for Frankie de Jong. Eric Ten Hag expects Frankie de Jong to complete a move to Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag wants a reunion with the player. Frankie de Jong could be Eric Ten Hag's first signing. At Manchester United. Frankie de Jong has been at Barcelona for around three years. Barcelona got him back in 2019. Barcelona got him from Ajax. They paid around £65 million. Frankie de Jong has got a contract with Barcelona until 2026. He is a versatile midfielder. And yesterday I gave you the news regarding Christian Eriksen. So Man United have been handed a Christian Eriksen transfer blow as the Denmark star wants to stay in London. Tottenham and Brentford are both interested. But Man United are interested in signing Christine Eriksen on a free transfer. Uh, Man United have already made an offer for Eriksen. Um, revert back to the other week, Man United sent scouts to watch Christian Eriksen. Christian Eriksen's contract at Brentford expires at the end of this month. He joined Brentford back in January. When he officially signed for Brentford, he only signed a six-month contract. Brentford did get Ericsson from Inter Milan, 
before Ericsson was at Tottenham and he was a long-serving player when he was at Tottenham and when he was younger, he was at Ajax. Revert back to Euro 2021, Christine Ericsson collapsed. He suffered a cardiac arrest. Um, in general, there's a lot of players that Eric Ten Hag wants to recommend to the club. You know, his transfer budget has already been revealed. On the other side of things, uh, Ten Hag is going to get rid of a lot of players. It said around 10 or 11 players are set to leave Man United this summer. Well, as you all know, Juan Mata left Man United on a free transfer. Juan Mata did enjoy eight years at Man United, so he was a long-serving player. Cavani, he's already left the club. Cavani did lose his place in the Man United team when Ronaldo re-signed last year. Man United did get Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Uh, not so long ago, Man United confirmed Jesse Lingard, who be leaving. Lingard was part of the club for a long time. He came up our academy. Most of the time he was classified as a squad player because he didn't get in the team much. At one point, Lingard endured a four-month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact. Uh, Matic, he left the club not so long ago. Uh, Roma announced the signing of Matic on a one-year deal. So Matic is now reuniting with Jose Mourinho. Uh, Paul Pogba, he's leaving Man United on a free transfer when his contract expires at the end of this month. Not so long ago, Lee Grant retired. Eric Bailly. And Axel Tuanzebe are set to leave the club this summer. So there you go. Uh, Dean Henderson, you know, he's on his way out of Man United. Not so long ago, Sky said that Dean Henderson's move from Man United to Nottingham Forest is at an advanced stage. Nottingham Forest, they're apparently close to agreeing a deal for Dean Henderson. The deal is a loan with an option to buy for around £20 million. Newcastle have also been interested in Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson is Man United's second-choice goalkeeper. So you don't get in goal much. Last season, Henderson made just three appearances. Uh, Tom Eaton, he's on his way out of the club as well. Uh, Tom Eaton is Man United's third-choice goalkeeper. Man United... Got heating on a free transfer from Villa. Alex Tellez, he's on his way out of the club as well. Uh, he's been poor now for the last few months. He appeared to be our first choice left back when we had Ralph Rangnick. That's only because Luke Shaw wasn't available. Tellez has been subjected to a lot of transfer speculation before Man United got him from Porto back in 2020. Uh, Phil Jones, he'll be leaving the club this year, I should imagine. Uh, Phil Jones is not one of our first choice centre-halves, but despite that, he's still being given you know, chances. But he's only made, what, four Premier League appearances since January 2020. Phil Jones has enjoyed 11 seasons at the club, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. His contract at Man United expires next year. Uh, Man United are looking to get rid of Harry Maguire. Not so long ago, it said Harry Maguire is set for talks with Eric Ten Hag over the Man United captaincy. We need to take the captaincy off off him throughout the course of last season the vast majority of Man United fans were demanding for the captaincy to be taken off Maguire because he's not a leader Man United overpaid for Maguire got him for 80 million he's the most expensive centre half in the world at the moment and he's the second most expensive signing at the club behind Pogba 
Maguire's been a United player for around three years or so now. Aaron Wambasaka, he's also on his way out of the club. I think he'll leave this year. I'm hearing that Crystal Palace are interested in signing Bissaka on loan. Well, Bissaka was at Palace before he came to Man United. Most of the time, Bissaka's good defensively, but the attacking side of his game is not so good. He wasn't our first choice right back when we had Rangnick, you know, Diego Delo was. And Juan Bissaka has endured like three full seasons at Man United. Man United got Bissaka in a deal worth £50 million back in the summer of 2019. As you all know, Cristiano Ronaldo wants to leave Man United with Roma rivaling sport in Lisbon to sign him. Ronaldo's contract at Manchester United expires next year. There is an option to extend for a further year. He's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. He earns 480 grand a week. Man United re-sign Ronaldo in the summer of last year from Juventus. Uh, since Ronaldo re-signed for Man United, he's got 18 goals in the Premier League. He has 24 goals in all competitions. Not so long ago, Ronaldo won the Goal of the Season award. And he also got named the Samat Busby Player of the Year. Ronaldo has got a good pedigree as a player. He's won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Ronaldo did miss Man United's final game against Crystal Palace last season due to a hip injury. And next year, I'm expecting players to leave Man United. I think next year, uh, Luke Shaw could leave if he doesn't pick up form and he doesn't stop getting injuries. Uh, last season, I thought Shaw was poor, but there again, had injuries last season. Earlier on this year, Shaw came out and said that he prefers playing for England than Man United. Uh the best season Shaw had was the season before last. He's been at Man United for around eight years, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. His contract expires next year. Man United did get Luke Shaw from Southampton. I think next year Victor Lindelof will be leaving. I don't think he'll leave this year. I've got my strong reservations about Lindelof, but there again, Lindelof has had his good games at United. You know, Lindelof is not one of Man United's first choice centre halves. Lindelof's under contract to Man United until 2024. Man United got Lindelof from Benfica back in 2017 in a deal worth around £31 million. Pounds. Uh, Fred, I think he'll leave the club next year. I don't think he'll leave this year. Uh, Fred isn't good enough to represent the club, but there again, revert back to when we had Ralph Rangnick early on in his managerial tenure. I was actually saying that Fred had been one of our standout performers. But then obviously he picked up an injury towards the end of last season, has failed to show consistency since then. Fred, you know, has played a hell of a lot of games alongside Scott McTominay in the centre midfield. He's also played some games alongside Matic. He's played alongside Pogba. Uh, Man United got Fred from Shakhtar Donetsk around three or four years ago. Man United got him in a deal worth £50 million. Marcus Rashford. I think he could leave next year if he doesn't pick up form. 
and he doesn't stop getting injuries and that. So I'm saying the same thing as what I said regarding Luke Shaw earlier on in the video. Uh, Rashford's already said, though, he wants to stay at Manchester United. Uh, not so long ago, Rashford rejected a move to Tottenham. Rashford missed Man United's final game against Crystal Palace at the end of last season due to illness. Rashford is a decent player overall, but he hasn't been the same player since he had that operation on his shoulder. He missed the first two months of last season with that shoulder operation. Rashford, you know, has been part of the club for a long time. He came up our academy in that. You know, he's been a United player since the age of seven and he broke into our senior squad back in 2016. He's out of contracts next year. So there you go. And Diego Delo, I think, you know, he'll leave as well next year. And Anthony Martial, Manchester United are looking to get rid of him permanently. You know, to raise funds. Last season, Martial was out on loan with Sevilla. Uh, there's a lot of there's players that Man United will keep as well. Uh, David De Gea will stay at the club. You know, last season, David De Gea was absolutely sensational. You know, De Gea is regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Uh, not so long ago, De Gea won the Players' Player of the Year. He's won everything domestically at the football club and not so long ago he said De Gea was close to extending his contract until 2025. David De Gea's current contract at Man United expires next year. De Gea earns around £375,000 a week. He's endured like 11 years at Man United so reflecting on that he's been a long servant. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. Man United did get De Gea from Atletico Madrid back in 2011. Uh, Rafael Varane, um, he'll stay at the club. Don't know how long for, but he'll be here this year and I think he'll be here next year. Uh, Varane is a good centre-back at Man United so far, let me analyse it, I think he's had his good games, he's had his poor games as well, let's be honest, he hasn't done as well as a lot of United fans expected, um, he's had quite a few injuries since he became a United player, Man United got the run from Real Madrid last year, and that's when obviously Lindelof and Bay lost their places in the team. Varane's got a contract with Man United until 2025. Varane's got a good pedigree behind him because look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at Real Madrid. And he was also a long serving player when he was at Real Madrid. You know, he was at Real Madrid around 10 years. Scott McTominay, I think he'll stay at the club as well. But there's aspects of his game that I've got to improve. I thought earlier on in Rangnick's managerial tenure, McTominay had actually been one of our best performers. The best games I've seen McTominay enjoy, I thought he was very good in the 6-2 win against Leeds, in the 5-1 win against Leeds, and he played very well against Aston Villa in the FA Cup third round last season. Revert back to 2020, McTominay committed his future to the club because he did sign a five-year contract. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, he'll also stay at the club as well. Um, I thought last season Fernandes enjoyed a lot of poor games. You know, Fernandes has not been the same player since Ronaldo re-signed for the club. 
But before Ronaldo came, I thought Fernandez was absolutely superb. You know, Fernandez is one of our best players and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. You know, earlier on this year, Bruno Fernandes signed a new contract with Man United until 2026. Fernandes earns around £240,000 a week now. He has been a United player for over two years. Man United got him from sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Uh, Jadon Sancho, he'll also stay at the club as well. It'll be this year, um, I presume it'll be next year. Sancho has had his good games at United, he's had his bad games. He hasn't done as well as expected, but you know it does take some players time to settle in. You know, Man United signed Sancho from Borussia Dortmund last year. Man United got him in a deal worth £78 million. You know, Man United paid around £73 million up front. He's under contract until 2026 there's an option to extend for a further year Sancho did endure four good years with Borussia Dortmund before he re-signed for Man uh, before he signed sorry for Man United Anthony Elanga um, he'll stay at Man United as well um, I think Elanga's had a lot of good games since he got into Man United's first team squad. You know, Anthony Elanga joined Man United's academy at the age of 12. He's got a contract with Man United until 2026. Don't forget last season, Anthony Elanga got racially abused on social media following his penalty miss against Middlesbrough in the cup. I totally disagreed with Elanga getting racially abused. Uh, when we had Rangnick though, Rangnick actually said that Elanga was close to leaving Man United. Uh, Alejandro Ganacho, he will also stay. You know, he's a young player. I think he, he played in the first team last season. Uh, Ganacho did get a brace in Man United's 3-1 win against Nottingham Forest. That was the under-18s. It was the FA Youth Cup. Man United have won an, a, rec a record 11 FA Youth Cups. That Hannibal Meadsbry, he'll stay. He started in the final game against Crystal Palace last season. It was his first start. So there you go. But um, Eric Ten Hag, he knows he's got a massive task ahead of him. And if Ten Hag fails to exceed expectations, then it's very likely that Man United will sack him. Don't forget, this is Ten Hag's first ever time managing in the Premier League. You know, earlier on this year, it got officially announced that Ten Hag got appointed in as the new manager of Man United. He replaced Ralph Rangnick. When Ten Hag got appointed in, he signed a three-year contract with an option to extend for a further year. You know, Ten Hag is Man United's fifth permanent manager since Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, he did attend Man United's final game against Crystal Palace last season. You know, Mitchell van der Gag and Steve McLaren are working alongside Ten Hag at Man United. Ten Hag is a good manager, 
and I've got to give him credit for what he did at Ajax because at Ajax he won Eredivisie titles, he won Dutch Cups. He, back in 2019, got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals and he developed the young players well. Ten Hag was the Ajax manager for around five years. You know, earlier on this year, Ralph Rangnick left Manchester United. So obviously, Rangnick, in taking up the consultancy role at Man United, earlier on this year, Ralph Rangnick got appointed in as the new head coach of Austria. Rangnick did sign a two-year deal. Uh, Rangnick was Man United's interim manager for around five months. He only enjoyed one transfer window as Man United's interim manager and unfortunately didn't get backed in this year's January transfer window. Before, Ralph Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Lokomotiv Moscow. Last season, Man United enjoyed their worst ever Premier League season in terms of points, you know, we just finished on 58 points and last season Man United finished 6. Uh, Man United are in the Europa League for the upcoming season. As things stand, Man United have not won a trophy now for around five years. Nowhere near good enough to our standards. Man United have only won four trophies in the last ten years. Won three trophies under Mourinho, the Europa League, the EFL Cup and the Community Shield. If you want to put that into the equation, Man United won the FA Cup under Van Gaal. The last time Man United won the Premier League was back in 2013. That's almost 10 years ago now. Since Ferguson retired, five managers have gone. You know, we had Moyes got sat, then we had Van Gaal got sat, then we had Mourinho got sat. Then we had Solskjaer, he got sacked in November last year and not so long ago, Ralph Rangnick left. Uh, not so long ago, the Premier League fixtures got released. Uh, Man United do play Brighton at Old Trafford on the opening day of the season. That'll be a difficult game because I thought last season Brighton enjoyed a very good season to their standards. Manchester United did beat Brighton at Old Trafford last season 2-0. But Brighton beat Man United 4-0 at the Amex Stadium towards the end of last season. You know, I do know a lot of the players that Brighton have got. You know, they've got Leandro Trossard, that's very good. Neil Malpe, he's one of the best players that Brighton and Ove Albion have got. They've got Eve Bissoma. Uh, Man United went in for him back in January. They have Tarek Lamptey, he's a very good right back and Man United went in for him back in January. Mark Q Carella, he's good. Uh, they've got Danny Welbeck. Danny Welbeck is a former Manchester United player. Moises Caicedo. Jeremy Sarmiento, he's a striker. Uh, Evan Ferguson. Pascal Gross. Adam Lallana. Adam Lallana is a former Liverpool and Southampton player. Alexis McAllister. Steve Alzey. Uh, Brighton have a very good centre half in Lewis Dunk. They've got Adam Webster, Shane Duffy, Joel Veltman. Uh, the goalkeepers Brighton have got, they've got Jason Steele, Robert Sanchez, and Thomas McGill. 
So there, a lot of the players that Brighton and Hove Albion do have. Uh, let me put into the equation that they've lost players. They lost Ben White uh, to Arsenal a year or two ago now. Brighton did receive around £50 million for him. They also lost Dale Stevens to Burnley. And back in January this year, Brighton lost Daniel Byrne. Daniel Byrne went to Newcastle from Brighton. And they also lost Glenn Murray. Uh, the Brighton manager is Graham Potter. <coughs> Graham Potter's got a contract with Brighton until 2025. Brighton appointed Graham Potter in back in 2019, so he's been the Brighton manager now for a good three years or so. Before Brighton, Graham Potter managed Swansea and Ostersund. Uh, Man United... Second game is Brentford, and then obviously Man United's third game is Liverpool. I haven't looked at, you know, all Man United's fixtures from, you know, the start of the season to the end, but I know the first three games. Uh, don't forget Man United have got pre-season games coming up as well. You know, that's to prepare for the new Premier League season. So now, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.